The Story of St. Kevin of Glendalough. My next story centers on another extraordinary Irish saint, famous for his many miracles and remembered for his love of nature and the order of God's creation, St. Kevin of Glendalough. As a child, St. Kevin was very prayerful and had a great love for our blessed Lord in the Holy Eucharist. On one particular Ash Wednesday at the age of seven, he was alone in his room praying in preparation for Easter tide. With his arms outstretched in meditation of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, a blackbird flew in the window and gently landed in the palm of his hand. Treating his hand as a nest, the blackbird laid an egg there. Being very compassionate to the blackbird, the little saint kept his hands lifted up in prayer and contemplation of our blessed Lord on the cross for the entirety of the Lenten season. Throughout the forty days, the little blackbird brought Kevin berries and seeds for him to eat until the young bird emerged from its egg. Renewed in spirit by this time of deep contemplation, the young saint joyfully set out to celebrate the Easter Triduum. Many years later, after his ordination to the Holy Priesthood, St. Kevin spent seven years as a hermit in the mountains surrounding a valley named Glendalough, meaning Valley of the Two Lakes. There he lived in a tiny five by seven by three foot cave shown to him by an angel of the Lord, and now known as St. Kevin's Bed. The Valley of the Two Lakes was very beautiful and Father Kevin spent his time there in prayer and meditation, enjoying the majesty and splendor of God's creation. While praying on the shore of the upper lake one day, St. Kevin made friends with a prayerful little otter. The otter brought the saint a fish to eat every day, and with a prayer and a blessing, St. Kevin would send the little otter joyfully on his way. One day, while Father Kevin stood waist deep in the lake with his arms outstretched in prayer, he dropped his prayer book in the water. The otter dove to the bottom, retrieved his friend's book, and returned it to his hand. As the saint took hold of the book, he realized the book's cover was not wet, and as he thumbed through its pages, he found that each and every one still remained dry. St. Kevin's gentleness and piety gained him several followers, and soon the high king, a pagan, heard of this and was not pleased that the saint and his followers were living in the region. The time had come for St. Kevin to establish a monastery, however King O'Toole would not allow it. Word quickly spread to the high king of the many miracles and healings the saint was performing. It happened that the king had a pet goose which had grown old and was close to death. King O'Toole was saddened by the goose's weakened state and asked Kevin to heal his beloved little pet. Kevin agreed on the condition that whatever land the goose flew over upon being healed would be granted him for the building of a monastery. Knowing that the goose could no longer fly, the king quickly agreed. St. Kevin laid hands on the goose and blessed it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and ordered it to rise up and fly for the glory of God. The goose immediately took flight and flew over the entire valley of the two lakes, and thus Glendalough was granted to the saint and his monks. Saint Kevin established his monastery there, which is still visited by pilgrims to this day. Visitors go there to see what remains of the chapel, monastery, and its towers, and to reflect on the beautiful gift of God's creation. But the real lesson to be learned at Glendalough cannot be found in the majestic mountains, sparkling waters, or cascading waterfalls of the Valley of the Two Lakes. What St. Kevin spent his life contemplating there amidst the beauty of Glendalough was that God's greatest gift to man cannot be found in creation, but rather in the fact that God loves us so much, he became man and hung upon a cross.
A Prayer to St. Kevin St. Kevin of Ireland, at Glendalough you discover the reflection of God in all created things. A glimpse of God's goodness in man, land, and beast. A harmonious opus and a true sense of peace. Help us to be good stewards of neighbor, nature, and self, and to recognize Christ's image in the poor, elderly, and unborn, affording them the dignity of the high calling to which they were born. St. Kevin of Glendalough, pray for us.